Hello and welcome to Eyewitness Report and Channel Television. I am Yomi Otaibi. This edition of the program offers a follow-up to eyewitness pictures of demolition of houses and other structures in Ikota, Lagos State, and Shidikmo community in Ogun State, where those aggrieved seek to understand the reason behind the action while calling for government's intervention. It promises to be a loaded package. We'll be right back. Most residents in Ikota housing estate in Etiosa, local government area of Lagos State, may have been rendered homeless following the demolition of their houses. Most of the affected people are said to have lived there for several years. We followed up on eyewitness pictures sent in to tell the story of the demolition and those behind it. An eyewitness video showing a bulldozer pulling down houses and other structures in Ikota housing estate, Lagos. Then some residents of the estate thronged the entrance of Channels Television in Lagos to make their grievance known to the public through the media. The inscriptions on their placards clearly represents the situation that brought them. Towards the end of the month, uh, last year, 2021, and at the beginning of this year, we suddenly had some land grabbers who came into the estate and they began to terrify us, asking us to leave the estate with guns, with ammunition, threats to life, and no dialogue, no communication, no compensation. And as I talk to you right now, houses are being demolished. This is the outcome of a series of demolitions carried out in the area between February and March. Houses, schools and worship centers, shops and other structures pulled down. <laughs> At the center of the demolished portion is a school still standing. The protest continues in a bigger way as Channel's television crew visits the affected community. Going by the crowd, everyone might have abandoned their endeavors to attend to this call for action. Both the young and old lend their voices to see government's intervention against the invasion of their community by some unidentified armed men. Most of them who claim to have been here for over 30 years are evictees from Morocco slum settlements. Some even possess a document indicating the offer of residential allocation at Ikota Resettlement Scheme for displaced persons within Morocco and environs. Since 1990, where they break Morocco, we, we go, not get anywhere to go. We are here. Then they wrote something down there. Um, Otedola, you say Governor Otedola, this place is for set, Morocco settlement. So now, they come here. We will we suffer for Morocco. Come here and again now. Suffer for bush, clear the bush. But even though it is government, here it is here. It's a federal government. Since 1960, now you buy land for Morocco. You carry us come here. When you break Morocco, you carry and come to Ikota. Since here you carry and come to Ikota, you don't do anything for us. You hear me? Okay, I they pay land use. Yes. For my house, since now, yes, last year I bring the land use for me, I they pay. Our people will get the uh, allocation house. What do you want to do? Allocation house. What do you want to do for us? At the time of recording, a front end loading equipment is busy sand filling places where property has been removed, apparently preparing the ground for another development. The one that has allocation. Patrick Joshua says his home, a three-bed apartment, is among those recently demolished without prior notice. When they came in, they, are comp they came with some uniformed men, police and all that. We just think maybe they came to inspect, the, maybe it's federal government or state send them for inspection or something. So we, before we know it, they start flocking people, pushing people away, and they now do what? 
they drove in, they drove in their truck, their caterpillar, whatever they call, begin the four people houses. They fall my own, look at my own there from here. They fall every other people house, they begin to and when we now came out to ask them what happened, they start arresting people, beating people. So some people ran away. Because we can't stand them with gone. I'm hanging out with somebody, with my family, in an open space somewhere. I have about three children. I have a wife and my, my in-laws, there are about six of them that came to run business with me. They are there, in a place where you cannot even sleep. If rent come now, we can't stay there. Because as we speak now, many people are sleeping. If you come here in the evening, in the night, you see them gathered here with children, on the sun, with their mosquito nets. The demolition has been in phases, and while it's on, we noticed an enumeration form with one of the occupants whose rented apartment was demolished. She was given the form to fill in her personal information in order to benefit for a compensation. I rented the house for one year. I paid for one year and a half. So I've, st I've stayed for two months. This is, this is the third month. The third month has not even completed. So now they came and they said that they want to demolish the house. So, so last Friday they came and they marked the house. When they marked it, they said that they will, they will, before Friday that they gave us seven days. They gave us one week to pass. Yes, they told us that they are going to demolish the house in seven days' time. So we should be ready. So today they just came and they called me and they said that I should come or that the people are there. They care with the Mopo, the OPC, the, everybody was there with guns and a hem. So they said that we should collect the form, that when we feel, we should put the form, fill our name, everything, then we should put passports. So that we submit to them, they are going to send money. I don't know if it's how much they are going to pay, maybe 5,000. It's not even more than that because they cannot pay me the house rent I pay because I pay for one year and a half. And they can, the money that they are going to give me will not solve my problem. The only thing I want is where I will stay. I'm not asking for their money. For the other side of the story, some members of the community are accusing the Community Development Association of working with the perceived developer and the state government to forcefully evict them. The CDA are the one frontier this mission. Why we said we go against them? That you cannot reset two laws twice. You know, at the initial stage, it is the CDA proposed this problem that we are facing. You, yeah, let me just see, let me just say this word. A rat, a thief in the house will call the one outside that. There is gold in this house. So that signifies the CDA are the one calling the agency outside that this land, you can, you can benefit from it. And with the process, um, they also want to benefit from it. The residents also claim to have written letters to relevant state agencies in a bid to call attention to it. The LBIC, Lagos Building Investment Company, they, they, they are the title holder of this place. So whatever you want to do, ask, you have to liaise with the LBIC. Before anything can be done, even the LBIC, we've, we've, we've written letters to them, we've been there having several meetings with them, but all to no avail. So what has been the response, like LBIC? The LBIC, what they are telling us that they don't know anything about it. We've engaged in series of uh, meeting the, the authority. There are a lot of uh, letters being addressed to the government that they should come to our aid. When you say authority, can you be specific? Um, like the Lagos State Government. We, we, we wrote a letter to Lagos State Government, that they should come to our aid. That what is really happening to us now, you are the one that relocated us here. Why should you now come thereafter and be telling us that we should be moved out again with our location paper uh, being with us? So it's not, going, it's not done that way. Structures which appear to be extensions of houses built by the HFP Engineering Company are marked for demolition, while the HFP buildings are not marked. Mrs. Rosling Odimoko is, however, afraid that demolition will get to her someday. It's now now we are living here. Big men of Nigeria, because they have money, they don't want to see poor people. Because if we are rich people, they for know how to do us since last 1990 to today to develop this place for us. But now what we heard that they have sold our Ekota place, we think that it's a joke. Before they started some feeding it, when they break the house, they will feed it so that people will not, don't know that 
there is house there. It's what they are doing now. They face the first st stage, but now they come to the second stage. And they don't have marked all these places that they are coming. It's what we are crying for. We don't know where to go. Or let them we put us inside the sea. The question yet to be answered is who ordered the demolition of these houses and for what purpose? What is the status of the original Alotis from Morocco? Attempts to reach the Lagos State Ministry of Housing as a title bearer of the allocation letter has not yielded results. Despite promises made, the Director of Public Affairs in the Ministry has not been able to get any top official to talk. Meanwhile, Channels Television obtained a video showing the process for the compensation of those affected by the demolition. Yes. The contractor managing the enumeration process, who chose to speak off camera on the condition of anonymity, says the houses being demolished are illegal structures and shanties built by squatters. He says the strategy has been to engage, enumerate and get people to vacate their property after compensation, claiming that over 400 of them have been captured and compensated based on the value of the properties. He revealed that the area is being cleared for the development of housing units under a private-public partnership involving Lagos State Government and the developer. According to him, the original allottees will be engaged before the second phase of the demolition exercise. As it stands, the fate of the allottees is hanging in the balance. They live in fear of becoming homeless anytime soon. A similar situation also played out in Shidikma community in Ogun State. About 50 structures, including fences, were demolished by the state government for violating the state building regulations. Debris from shattered buildings. The aftermath of a demolition exercise carried out by officials of the Ogun State government in Shidikma community in Abekuta, the Ogun State capital. The action is taken against owners of the structures for their failure to obtain building approval and permit. Not happy about the development, residents of the community embark on a peaceful protest to the office of the Ogun State Ministry of Urban and Fiscal Planning. We are not happy at all. Even up to now, the community have, is yet to settle. It's yet to settle. So and we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are not happy. Like how many buildings were affected? It's uh, the fence, the demolish and the building is over 50. It's over 50. And you know, up to a level that, uh, you know, on somebody's property, they are, they are um, well, they, they block the well. So it's like uh, somebody, something is behind it. So we are just telling them to tell us what is behind the demolition because I know His Excellency cannot send anybody to come and destroy some the people of Ogun State property. On ground to give reasons for the demolition is the commissioner, who also confirmed that the order came from his office. He says the action is imperative to ensure sanity and compliance with the city's master plan. What we are doing is uh, acting on basis of what the law has said, uh, that they were all legal developments, were developed without approval. But what happened is that it's an excise village area, and then we have been partnering with them uh, to help them to prepare uh, the layer. Because you see, you can't allow slums to be growing all over the place. Particularly if you are going outside, the, this is the secretariat. Those areas are the beautiful areas of, uh, of, 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 this, of the city, and you cannot allow it because of excision for it to be developed into slum. There are, there are private layers around the place. So we encourage them to prepare layout so that we can approve the buildings for them according to the layout. And we are in agreement that until the layout is finished, uh, there will be no development because people are doing illegally, illegal development. That's what we, we saw. That was why we went to do, to do that. The commissioner uses the occasion to emphasize the importance for residents to obtain approvals and permits before building. We are doing persuasion. Um, we daily we, we go to the radio, we do programs advising our people that uh, if anybody wants to build, uh, just come to our office. Within seven days, if you are come with your survey and with your title to the land, within seven days we we'll grant you approval. 
If you cannot grant your approval anywhere in any of our zonal offices, you just phone me. My phone is a public number. Just phone me and we, and we are going to do something about it. Seven days to get approval. But please, uh, it is not in those, in those days that it, takes, it took uh, six months, uh, one year to get approval. Now in seven days, you can get the approval. So there is no reason for anybody to go and start to do illegal development because that is what is going to make the city to develop in a very haphazard manner that is not uh, very sustainable. Residents of Shedepon are now left with the only choice of building according to a layout approved by the state government. However, they have appealed to the state government to suspend any further demolition while they develop a layout that conforms with the state master plan. Welcome back. Recently, we reported that a two-story building under construction in Jalingo, the Taraba state capital, collapsed and killed two people. The incident has put relevant agencies and other stakeholders in the building industry on their toes to effectively regulate the activities of builders and estate developers in the state. Rubble of bricks, concrete and wood lies scattered while onlookers watch with shock at the extent of destruction in the aftermath of a collapsed story building. <laughs> Most of the residents who front the scene of the disaster suddenly become volunteer rescuers, helping in bringing out those trapped in the debris. With their hands, they comb through the dust, while the excavator, on the other hand, ensures that heavy impediments are out of the way. Somehow, somewhere, their efforts yield result. After several hours, one of the workers is rescued. Hours later, the body of one of the trapped laborers is pulled out. When we had the distress call, we rapidly acted by uh, sending our men to the site, ensuring that uh, evacuation uh, has been done. And so far, our machine was here much earlier, and uh, victims were evacuated, uh, two were confirmed dead, and three were critically injured and were actually taken to the hospital are currently receiving a treatment. Ibrahim Adamu, a capita, is fortunate to come out from the collapse unhurt. We were walking here. Suddenly, this building caved in. It was lit when we tried to escape. I managed to dig holes down there that enabled me to escape. Amidst the chaos, a resident laments what he thinks is the cause of the collapse. He alleges the use of inadequate and substandard building materials. How can you use a very big market project like this by using white drop? And you are just your intention we don't know. Whether you were trying to kill people, we don't know. If you cannot use, you, you cannot use white white drop as a market project like this and use white drop as your own as your own uh, column. The incident prompts an on-the-spot assessment by officials of the Standards Organization of Nigeria and some building professionals. They seek to know the cause of the collapse and the level of damage. We have gone around to see the material that were used here. And um, as an organization, we cannot conclude um, by, by fiscal examination. So we still have to subject the material used here to further test to ascertain whether it uh, meets the standard requirement or it does not. And uh, another thing that we also need to consider is whether the size of iron road used here we are supposed to be using this project in the first place. From sightseeing, 
we could understand that uh, the, 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 the quality from the quality of materials and all the supervisors from the materials used on site, we can ascertain, even though we have not gone to detail, but by visual seeing of what has, uh, is, is on site, look at the materials on site, like the gravels, they are not the type of gravels that are supposed to use for story buildings like this. So with all this, uh, I feel it is no longer business as usual. People that are engaged, whether the contractors, whether the owners of the building like this should be punished for violating basic rules of construction. The owner of the building may have some questions to answer regarding the allegations. However, according to the Standards Organization of Nigeria, it appears he has paid himself in his own coin. Mr. Uche Obi, who I understand is the owner of this facility, uh, took us to court last year, December, because some of our operatives from SON went to his facility where he sells products because we got information that he's selling some substandard products. And then we seed up his place and then we, we started carrying out investigations about the products he's selling. He was not supposed to do any, he even took us to court. He was not supposed to do anything until the matter is called, in court is determined. That is, that is the proper thing to do. Meanwhile, the Taraba state government says it has ordered for the arrest of the owner of the building for contravening the state building laws. The ministry is not actually aware. Uh, we had made effort to stop the building, having noticed that uh, uh, the owner is, has been at the site without our approval. He has not granted, we have not granted any approval to him. And so as far as the ministry is concerned, this is an illegal structure. So major to get him arrested is, in, is actually in place. Despite the allegations leveled against him, the owner of the collapsed building, Mr. Ucheobi, maintains calmness and appeals for calm. I still use this media to plead the, the people of Tarabians to calm themselves down. By special grace of God, police will investigate and get out the root of exactly what happened and what makes the warehouse to collapse. So everybody should remain calm and police is on top of it and investigating exactly what happened. According to him, the affected structure is a warehouse under construction. As a dealer in building materials, one wonders why Mr. Obi would choose to use substandard items for his own project. I'm in Jaringo now for 80 years. My aim and mission of being in Jaringo is to contribute for the development of my quarter for the development of the state. We are not here to make trouble. We are here to put our own quarter in order the state to move forward. I'm a building materials dealer. I am also a developer. And in this entire my life, I never get a crop of such thing. Around past eight, the engineer called me that I should come. That they came to start the work and they find out all the pillars inside the warehouse were watered. So when he called me on that, I went. I saw it. The pillars is watered. I guess what I mean, and the building is water. Doesn't, I don't know what to call it. But I asked him, can this thing stop you work? Because I did not ask anybody to come and water the pillars for me. He said, no problem. You cannot stop them. You cannot stop them anything. But it's good for me to see. I said, okay. Let them go ahead and do their work. Then I proceed to the court. Not up to one hour. I begin to receive call when I was inside the court. And I cannot pick it until when we through the court. When I come outside and I call the person that are calling me, he say, come on, that they are working all of the sudden. The entire warehouse, the warehouse that carries six, eight pillars, 
all of the study, everything just went down at, at the spot. Mr. Albi, however, insists that he has all the approvals for the construction of the building and they are with the site engineer who is currently in police custody. At the time of this report, the death toll from the collapse stands at two, while the three injured people are receiving treatment at the hospital. The collapse building have since been brought down after search and rescue operations were concluded. That's where we draw the curtains on this edition of the program. See you same time next week. I'm Yomi Otaigwe.